All right, I'm sitting here with Peggy at Moore Manor Lavender. I'm, okay, okay. I love this place. This is, it's magical. It is, it's so beautiful. I'm so glad. It's, oh, and we're, we're like under this beautiful shade tree and there's an English garden over here. And I love that not only do you have lavender, but there are little pockets of gardens and it's just, this is truly a happy place. <laughs> so thank you for having me. Oh my, I, I'm so happy you could come and that's kind of what we wanted is when we first started growing lavender and we absolutely fell in love with it. I mean, yeah. we planted it on a whim and we were like, let's see if we can even grow lavender here. We knew people did in Maine, but we didn't know much about it. And we absolutely fell in love with it. It did great. We, you know, we learned about it, cover it in the winter and we did everything that they said to do and it was stunning and we're like let's play it more so it <laughs> so became an, the lavender obsession <laughs> it right? Did. right and so then like our other flower gardens we wanted something here once the lavender is gone because it's such a short season kind of like strawberries and other things so we still wanted beauty around for people to enjoy kind oh, of okay. a park-like atmosphere yeah. where people could come and de-stress just get yeah. refreshed yeah. And so planting the rose garden, the butterfly garden, we have a little English garden here, secret garden. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we just want to spread that beauty around so there's something to see and enjoy. I love that. And you can you can probably hear children and families in the background. And um, I was just out in the lavender fields and there was this um, lovely young woman and probably a friend and mom. And they were cutting lavender for her wedding. Aww, I know. It's so isn't that it special? Is, it's it feels unbelievably so good special it's a dream come true it really is well, let's go back to the beginning of the dream how did how did you end up here on this property and and just okay. kind of how how you started how you started this this endeavor this business yeah okay so we've lived in this house the brick house for uh 27 years i think raised our five children here and we homeschooled so we had large gardens and we had animals at different times and so this was their life I mean we, we really made it something that they could have a nice childhood um, nice. so once they were adults I was like what am I going to do <laughs> do I go back to work um, I had had a few online businesses while we were raising them so one night my husband came in um, from being outside and he said let's see if we can grow lavender. We bought 250 plants, put them in and learned all about the lavender and we fell in love with it, planted 750 more. So the year that those thousand plants bloomed, we just, I said to my husband, we have got to open this up for people to come see it. I mean it, it blew us away, it was so gorgeous. So that's what we did. Um, and that first summer that we opened, we had a thousand visitors. I had a table set up outside with my stuff on it that mm -hmm. I was making. Mm -hmm. So every night, because so many people were coming, I would stay up till midnight, two in the morning, making something for the next day. Wow. It was hysterical. Wow. It's such a great main story because it's a combination of you being entrepreneurial, combining yeah. entrepreneurship and, and small business and creativity and innovation with with agriculture yeah it's just yeah. it's it's cool it, it really just all came together and then and with tourism too you're you're bringing people here i i have to ask before i forget i've tried to grow lavender in my garden and it, it does great after i plant it and it does great through the season but i cannot get it to survive a main winter okay so i would say the number one um important thing about lavender is to get the variety that's zoned for your area okay that's a mistake that's made often. Um, the big box stores don't sell lavender generally zoned for our area. Oh. Greenhouses all around do. Yeah. So you're safe going to a greenhouse in Maine and okay. getting a lavender plant. The best thing is to try to get an English lavender. They definitely do well here and then some of the French lavenders do also. But English is the safest um, variety to aim for. And under the English title, there are Hidcote, Munstead, Rosia are some of our favorites. So those are light purple, dark purple, and white, the, the varieties I just named. Um, 
I mean, there are 450 varieties of lavender, so there are a lot no to idea. choose from. I yeah, no a lot idea. of different colors. Right. Um, so that being the most important thing, you get a plant that is zoned for your area, and then it wants full sun, and it doesn't like to be watered. So oh. often what people will do is they'll get a lavender plant and they'll put it in their flower garden, which is fantastic. And then they'll water the flower garden and the lavender will die every time because root rot is its biggest enemy. So hmm. we have never watered our lavender in the summer. You've never? We've really? never watered our lavender. The only time we water is the first year. So hmm. that new plant, we baby it. We put it in the ground. We water it a few days later, we check it, we poke our finger down, you know, as far as we can get it. If the ground is damp, we leave it. If it's dry, we water it. Another telltale sign that lavender gives us is if it is absolutely too dry, it will wilt like other plants. It'll start drooping yeah. and then you know, okay, I do need to water. Because sometimes yeah. we go through really dry spells. Um, so those are the most important parts of growing lavender here in Maine. And the other thing is we do cover ours. That's what I was going to ask you. When, yeah. How do you prep it uh, for the winter at the end of season? So do you cut it all back? In the fall. Yes, okay. we do. Okay. We cut about two inches above the woody part of the plant. So we're leaving a couple inches of growth and we shape ours into a bush shape. So lavender, if left um, not pruned, will sprawl. It's a woody plant. And so it will just sprawl and get leggy. And what you end up having a few years later is on those branches, you have little spikes of lavender that aren't very tall and don't do as well. So all the energy is going to those long branches. What we're doing is we're stopping it from doing that and we're cutting it into a bush, as you can mm -hmm. see by looking at ours. And we also cut all the bottom branches. So lavender will, will grow, touch the ground and come up. We don't want those branches hugging the ground because we want air to get in there and dry out the roots. So we, if you go over and look at our plants, you will actually see we have cut all of the branches underneath. So ours kind of look like perky bushes. The other interesting thing about lavender, I'll throw this out there for people that want to grow it, is in the spring when we take our covers off and the plants are kind of flat and that's fine. They, with the sun, they pop right back up. But what happens in the spring is they look dead for a long time. I have so many people contacting me saying, I think my lavender plant died. And so I just say wait because they take a long time. They stay gray for a long time. And so what I, what we do often and we tell everyone else to do is to go down and scrape a little bark off. Mm -hmm. And if it's green, it's fine. Mm -hmm. If it's black, that piece is probably dead. You can check some of the others. But it is, it is a, a panicky feeling yes. when, you know, spring, everything's starting to bloom and lavender still looks dead. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it comes to life. It, comes it just back. takes time. It, that's true for many of us after a long winter, I know, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> time to just recover and wake <laughs> up. Um, do you, in the spring, do you fertilize? Do you add any, no, anything? No, so that's the other unique thing about lavender and actually really good news for most of us. It does not like rich soil. So oh. we plant ours in a sandy, gravelly soil. No fertilizer, no compost, no special treatment. It doesn't like rich soil. So you can basically choose a spot anywhere. Um, if, it's, if it's wet, um, we recommend hilling. And um, if it's too wet, lavender is not gonna do well. Now I'm thinking about the lavenders that have failed in my garden and you just answered all the reasons why. <laughs> Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. have to try again. Um, <laughs> when don't give up. Yes. I'm not gonna give up. That's what gardening is all about. What is your your season in terms of blooms and and yeah. best time to pick and and harvest? Okay, so every year it's a little different. Um, we harvest at a very picky time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, when the buds are in full bloom and they just start to blossom. So we watch the stems and if a couple of the buds are opening up and flowering, we know Sophia. that the buds on that stem are as mature as they're going to get before they all open up and flower. Once they flower, we've lost the oil. So we want the lavender oh. oil that's locked inside each bud. So we use it for sachets, culinary. 
So once it flowers, it's gone. Mm -hmm. and, and then if you dry those bunches, lots of times they'll kind of crumble off. So we want those full buds. So we're watching closely and when the plants are at that stage, we harvest them. I mentioned earlier, there's families here. Um, they're, kids walking around like is there's we have a scavenger, a scavenger hunt. hunt oh that's so fun it's so much fun the kids love it so that's we give them this idea. paper and every year we do a different one so we just list things for them to find they check it off we give them a little purple pencil mm -hmm. they go around check everything off i know and they bring it back to us when they're done and we give them a little prize so Aww. they get to choose a prize from a basket and they keep their pencil that's so cool so it's really fun but a great way to, in, to not only for for families to, to come and have a fun, fun thing to do and a great outing with their kids yeah. but to introduce them to gardening and gardens and yeah. farming and the butterflies are amazing today yes. and just yeah, yeah. It's, and you and I love your gift shop I'm a bit oh, obsessed with what you have in there and that's that's full of um, lavender based products but you've got some other interesting main made yeah. products in there yeah. and we have a lot quite a few local people that help us um, make the things in there I have a friend who's very crafty and she comes up with lots of beautiful ideas for things to do with the lavender and then I have two different women making the lavender soap for me and I have another woman who's local and she does the candles and the um, lotion stick um, so we, we just and we have that. a lot of people yeah. helping us. I mean, we just would never that. have all the time to do it. Everyone it that comes here is so happy. So we have yeah. like, yeah. it's a dream job. Yeah, exactly. It really is. <laughs> this is awesome. This is like the best empty nester story, right? Yeah, the kids it, are gone. For real, right? I need to nurture, I know. grow something. Um, two questions, because I know, I know you may be asking. Does it cost anything to come here? No, so we are open to the public, free to visit. We want people to just come and relax. We typically open Mother's Day weekend, okay. mid-May, and we start selling plants. So we um, have a friend who owns a greenhouse and he grows the lavender plants for us actually. So um, by mid-May, we get the plants and we pot them um, into a seven inch pot. And that's what we start selling and we have our gift cottage open. That early in the season, there is nothing. There are usually no flowers, right, no right. lavender. No. So it, it's kind of dreary here. We're just, we've got spring just starting to yeah. roll. Um, and then we are open all the way through August. Okay. We generally play September by ear, but mm. definitely through the end of August okay. we're open. So we're open all summer. Okay. You can pay, I think it was $6? That, yes, right? six dollars. We you get a pair a of scissors. Yep, we can get kid-friendly scissors. Yes, <laughs> good. We all <laughs> so if the adults run with are those. running around <laughs> and they fall, they're not going to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, good, good idea. <laughs> so we give. I think it's like five or six-inch twisty, and whatever you can fit in that is six dollars. Okay, it ends up being a bunch about like this fresh. It dries. It's a little smaller. Um, for phenomenal, which is our tall lavender, it's called an intermediate. It's more like a French lavender. Um, we charge ten dollars for the twisty um, yeah. because those are nice and tall. I've and seen those that. I've are seen actually those are what's in full bloom right, right now. Right. They right. thankfully are staggered from the English lavenders, and they mm. bloom a little later, which works out great. Oh, that's nice. So we have those now. And then if you if you if you do that, is it, you just hang them upside down and, and dry yes. them. Yes. And, and then, then a couple weeks, they're okay. dry enough for you to stand up in a vase or Ooh. anything like that. Nice. If you want to use them for culinary and you actually want to take them off the stems, what we do is we hold that bunch, we, we use elastic and we hold that bunch in our hands and we just rub it like this and all the buds drop off. Right. And so generally I wait longer than two weeks if I'm going to do something like mm -hmm. that, just so they're, the drier they are, the easier You're they sure they're fully dried the to, yes. to do that. Yeah. So have you had lavender in food? No. Okay. So. It's no, amazing. Talk, talk to us about and, that. Yes. So um, one of the most important things is not to use too much lavender. So we actually put the buds in food, cookies, brownies, scones, oh muffins, gosh. breads. So if you're going to use the buds, we put them on a cutting board and we chop them as finely as we can get them because biting a full bud is a little strong. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so that's our recommendation for when it, we use just the buds. One of my favorite things to do is to use, uh, to make a lavender sugar. So I take two cups of sugar, two tablespoons of buds, and I put it in a food processor and grind it until the lavender is kind of ground up in the sugar. And what this does is lavender is an herb, it's from the mint family. And if you put it in a mortar and pestle like you would any other herb, um, even though it's dry, it will bounce around because there's the oil locked inside each bud. And that's what gives it the flavor is that oil. So even though it's dry, there's the oil in there, it will not crush up. You can't. It will not. It just wow. bounces and bounces. That's why we recommend putting it on a cutting board and chopping it as finely as you can get it with a sharp knife. Okay. Because it's very difficult to grind it up by itself. Now with the friction of the sugar, that grinds up the lavender. And you'll see in the gift shop, we do sell it and you can see what it looks like, but it's easy to make it at home on your own. But I'm gonna buy some. <laughs> and I do have instructions for that on my website. Oh, okay. I have recipes. Oh, good. I have instructions for how to make the lavender sugar. We want people to just enjoy. So you can grow your own lavender, you can take the buds off the stems and you can put it in food. How does it change the flavor of the okay, sugar? So it just, so what you're doing is you're kind of infusing that lavender flavor and lavender is hard to describe. It's, it's sort of sweet and summery, mm -hmm. but if you use too much, it's going to taste like a flower or soapy. Like right. it's not good to use too much. And if you've ever, if you've ever had lavender and you haven't liked it, please try one of my recipes because the proportions are perfect mm -hmm. and um, it, it's going to taste lovely. It, it gives you a whole new flavor experience. There's no way to describe it really. I'm excited to try it. And with the lavender sugar, you can take the sugar in any recipe and simply swap it for the lavender sugar. Okay. So it's very simple to do it that way. Okay. Um, if you want to make something and try lavender for the first time, I would recommend on my website, lemon lavender cookies. Ooh. It's absolutely delicious. Lavender pairs really well with lemon. Yeah. Now, chocolate's my favorite, oh, yeah. but but so that's a great summer cookie. The lavender, yes. Right, it's a great summer cookie. Very summery. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to make those. Yes, you are. Um, <laughs> so, oh, thank you so much for your oh time my, today. You're welcome. This has I'm just so been happy a gift. Yeah, you can enjoy it. Me too. Um, and, and you come and enjoy it. Um, uh, you're open. We're you, open you've got Monday your hours. through Saturday, yep. 10 to 5. The only day we're closed is Sunday. So you, you, need, you need to rest. <laughs> You're amazing. And give our helpers a rest. You're so, amazing. Yes. What a great story. What a great place. Thank, Thank you. you so much for this Thank opportunity. You. Thank you so much. And I'm going to um, head to the gift shop. Okay. Perfect. Spend a few bucks. Come um, see us. Yeah, come see us. <laughs> Thank you.